Okay, you're thinking about moving to Kansas City and you wanna buy a house. Where do you even begin? I'm Rach the Realtor here giving you the scoop on all things Kansas City and today's episode is just for you. Five things you need to know about buying a house in KC. The first thing you need to know about buying in Kansas City is that the prices vary dramatically by location. What this means is you could buy a house in one place and then buy the same house 10 miles the other direction and the price is dramatically different. That can be because of school district, because of local perception of the area, um, any number of reasons, but it's something to keep in mind for sure. Because if you're moving to Kansas City because of affordability, which many people do, it is a, a relatively affordable place to buy, but some places more so than others. So one example of this is the county on the Missouri side that houses Kansas City, Missouri, and many of the Missouri side suburbs is Jackson County. So this is stuff that's like south of the river for the most part. Um, homes between 600 and 800,000 is towards the higher end of our local price range for the most part. There were 167 of those sold in Jackson County in December of 2022. Johnson County is the county on the Kansas side that is home to Leewood, Overland Park, Mission Hills, Prairie Village, a lot of the Kansas side larger suburbs that are really, really popular. That number of homes that is sold between $607.99 in December is almost double at $303. So just one small taste of the varying price ranges we do have here in Kansas City. So something to keep in mind for sure. You still can find a home in the Kansas City Metro under 200,000, though that's getting harder by the day. They do exist. Under 300, there's plenty of areas where you can find those for sure. So this isn't to scare you off and say it's super expensive here, but just to say there are pockets that are much more expensive than other parts of town. The second thing you need to know about buying a house in Kansas City is the side of the state line you choose does matter. Now, it matters less than what locals would lead you to believe because let me tell you, when you choose which side of the state line to buy your house on, it now becomes part of your personality forever. You are now a Kansan or you are a Missourian. <laughs> and what I mean by that is people from Missouri think that their side of the state line is the best. They can't imagine why anyone would ever choose to live in Kansas. They have got it made. People in Kansas think, Oh my gosh, I would never live on the Missouri side. I love it here. This is the best place to live. So people are very passionate about their side of the state line, which I know when people move in here from out of state, they think it's pretty bizarre, which it kinda is. Beyond that, there are like logistical, practical reasons why your side of the state line matters. And most of them are financial. Like I talked about in point one, your location, the cost of your home varies pretty dramatically depending on where you live. And it's not down the board divided by the state line by any means, but that does impact it. And then the taxes are different from state to state. On average, taxes are a little bit higher in Kansas than Missouri. That is not always true if you really break it down on the granular level, but on average, that is the case. I've made a couple of videos where I get more in depth on that. One is the cost of living in Kansas City, and then the other is the Kansas versus Missouri, which side of the state line should you choose? So something to keep in mind. And then one last thing I wanna point out is if you work in Kansas City, Missouri, regardless of where you live, you also have a 1% income tax. So that is something that catches people off guard when they're moving here from out of town as well. Okay, number three, the third thing that you need to know if you're thinking about buying a house in Kansas City is that you really can have any kind of lifestyle that you want. If you want the urban feel, downtown, can walk to what I wanna walk to, live in a condo or a, a you know more urban feel neighborhood, we have it. That's mostly found in KCMO, although some of the downtowns of the suburb, you can get like a little taste of it too, like downtown Lee Summit, downtown Overland Park, but in Kansas City for sure, you can find that. You can own a home, a condo or a house and still feel the urban feel and that it doesn't feel like a major city, but you still can get a feel for the city life. Suburbia is 
the biggest thing in Kansas City. If you want to live in suburbia, whew, we have it in spades for you. Uh, and there are plenty of reasons that people love living in the suburbs here, um, which is why the vast majority of Kansas Cityans do actually live in suburbs and not in Kansas City itself. So something a lot of people don't realize though, is that the metro area is very vast. So we actually even have towns that are a part of the metro area. They get Kansas City News. You're just 30 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes from downtown that are truly rural communities. I always struggle with saying that word. Rural, 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 rural country. You know, the country life. If you want the country life, you can get it and still call yourself a Kansas City and still just be a hop, skip, and a jump from the hustle and bustle of downtown and everything you need. So that's the thing that is really interesting. I think a lot of people either think of Kansas, depending on where you're coming from, think of Kansas City as like a cow town, very country, or they think of it as, oh, it's the city. You know, I don't wanna live in a city, but actually we, we have everything here. Something to keep in mind if you're on a budget is there are parts of the Metro that do qualify for USDA loans. So this is kind of an agricultural loan that's meant to provide, you know, extra an ease for people moving into more rural areas. And blah, blah, blah long winded way of saying, you don't have to do a down payment. So you can find parts of the Metro where you're still only like 30 minutes from downtown but don't have to do a down payment even without being able to qualify for a VA loan. So that is something to ask your lender about, ask your agent about. If you're like, I wanna buy a house, but money's really tight, you could hone in on just specifically USDA areas and still be close to Kansas City, which is awesome. So yes, that is number three, is there are all types of lifestyles where that you can find in Kansas City, depending on where you live and where you work and where you play. Number four, the fourth thing you need to know if you're thinking about buying a house in Kansas City is you will drive, you will, <laughs> and you'll drive a lot. There are very few people that truly live in walkable neighborhoods in the entire metro. There are some spots, primarily in KCMO and actually in the city. It's a little more walkable and it does have the streetcar that runs down the middle of it. I actually had a client one time, I had a couple that both of them, they neither of them drove to work. They both were able to take the streetcar, ride a bike, whatever. But that's very rare in Kansas City. Furthermore, the metro, I've mentioned this, but it's, it's really wide. So like if you're driving from the furthest east to the furthest west point of the city, it's an hour more maybe in some cases, same north to south. Like it's not unheard of to drive an hour and 15 minutes either way and call it part of Kansas City. Most of you will not be driving all over the entire metro every day like I do, but I can tell you from experience that is the case. So if you're not used to driving a lot, keep this in mind. We don't have great public transportation. It's something that I know many, many, many people really want to prioritize moving forward. Um, you know, the movers and shakers of the city are really looking at that and trying to improve it, but right now it's not great. So you will be driving, especially if you took advantage of a USDA loan and moved out to one of the outskirts of the Metro, it's a 30 minute drive to downtown. Well, then it's another 30 to the other side of the city. So just keep those things in mind. Uh, also, I am a pretty much lifelong Kansas Cityan, so I will admit this on behalf of all locals, we say everything's 20 minutes away. We do. So we'll be like, um, oh, it's only a 20 minute drive. That could be 45 minutes. So we're just so used to driving. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter to us. It's just, and the great part is there's not a lot of traffic. It's pretty easy to get around here, but you will spend a lot of time in your car. So just being real, pointing that out. If you hate driving in your car, be really strategic about where you buy a house in the city. Number five, the fifth thing to keep in mind to know if you're thinking about buying a house in Kansas City is the weather. So you might be thinking, what does the weather have to do with buying a house? Well, lots of things. Um, one random thing to keep in mind is the leaves. It's, leaves are a big deal here. We have a lot of big old trees that drop a ton of leaves from like September to January in some of the tree species cases. So when you buy a house, that might not be something you think about, but yeah, look up, look at all those leaves. You're gonna be raking them or hiring someone to do it for you. Uh, the other factor with the big trees is the root systems can impact your sewer lines. So that's something to think about. The weather here, it's the Midwest, can be harsh. So a lot of times it impacts foundations. If we have a really dry summer, the foundations take a beating because of the soil is like pulling away from them. So that's something to think about. Um, the weather impacts your roof, like the freezing and the thawing over and over again, your driveways. Um, so there's a lot of maintenance to owning a home 
in the Midwest where the weather kind of cycles through all these extremes um, to think about. It's also lifestyle stuff. So if you're driving all over the city, we do get snow and ice. It's not as bad as Minnesota or Chicago. We do get it though. So think about the weather when you're purchasing your home. If you're going to be commuting a lot or have to get, have a job where you have to get to work every day, you might think about making sure you're close to major highways and interstates because those clear off first in bad weather for the most part. Something else to think about when you're buying a home with the weather here is tornadoes and severe weather. We do get them. So it may be important to you to have a basement or a crawl space or somewhere safe to go in the event of a tornado. Again, those trees looking, are they close to the house? Are they big? Um, if we have a real a bad windstorm, is there a chance a branch is gonna fall off and hit my house? So the weather here does impact your home buying decisions for sure. And your real estate agent will walk you through that and help you think about those things. But that is something else that you do need to know if you're buying a house in Kansas City. So five things to keep in mind if you are buying a house in Kansas City is number one, prices do vary dramatically by location. Number two, picking a side of the state line does matter, sometimes more than others. Three, you can find any lifestyle you're looking for. Any way you wanna live, you can find it in the metro area. Number four, though that may lead to a lot more driving. So you will drive a lot no matter where you live, but especially if you choose to live more towards the outskirts. And the number five is the pesky Midwest weather. We have it, you love it, you live with it. So that's what you need to know about buying a house in Kansas City. Of course, I would love to help you. So hit me up, email me, shoot me a text, and let's chat. Until then, see you next time.